I'm not cutting, I'm just asking. Let me tell you something, all right? We have been sitting around here for over an hour, and when I look around, all I see are people shooting the bull and drinking coffee. How can I help you? Oh, he was first. The, no, you go ahead. I think I want to hear this. Me too. You're right. Excuse me? You're right? How those words taste coming out of your mouth? Mike Vinegar. Who is that, SJ? Big Mike. He goes to high school here. What is he wearing? It's below freezing. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. Was this a bad idea? What's the big deal? It's just for one night. It is just for one night, right, Leanne? Tell me just one thing I should know about you. I don't like to be called Big Mike. Leanne, is this another one of your charities? We need to find out more about his past. Ah! He's been enrolled in seven different institutions. His grade point average begins with zero. He needs to do better in school. I'd love to work with him. This is mine? Yes, sir. Never had one before. What, a room to yourself? A bed. Michael's grades have improved enough that he can go out for spring football. How's he doing? I haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet. It's all really nice what you're doing, but don't be surprised if one day you wake up and he gone. I heard you got your new mama now. She fine, too. Michael was here. Tell him to sleep with one eye open. You threatened my son. You threatened me. Sandra Bullock. We're in the middle of practice, Leanne. You can thank me later. This team is your family, Michael. You have to protect them. Tony here is your quarterback. You protect his blind side. When you look at him, you think of me. Yes, ma'am. SJ, you're going to want to get this. Mike's the best left tackle I've seen in years. Better off somehow, someday. You're changing that boy's life. No, he's changing my life. The Blind Side. I said you could thank me later. It's later, Bert. Please pray with me. Gracious God, may all that we say and do bear witness to you. May we always proclaim Jesus and not ourselves. May we seek to do your will always. Amen. Well, today's gospel lesson, as you heard Brooke read, is about Jesus talking about different kinds of families, especially families of choice. So for our Faith in Film series, we chose The Blind Side because it also talks about families of choice. Jesus was very matter-of-fact when he said that family goes way beyond biology. And, as you saw in the clips, in The Blind Side, family too goes way beyond biology. So let's look again at what Jesus said about family. In the verses right before today's reading, we witness Jesus calling the disciples. The text says he went up to the mountain and he called those he wanted, and they came to him. Then in today's reading, we have his biological family coming to restrain him because the scribes are saying he's either out of his mind or possessed by a demon. You know, Jesus got a lot of that. So while he's trying to explain to these foolish folks that if he were possessed by a demon, he wouldn't be casting them out, his family of origin comes and calls for him, come home. When he hears this, when people come in to say, look, your mother and your brothers are out there saying, you need to stop this and come home, he says, who are my mother and my brothers? Then he looks at the disciples and he says, here are my mother and my brothers. Which is not to say Jesus didn't like his biological family. It's just that for him, family was much broader than that. Those he chose to spend his life with became his family. The disciples and Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, two sisters and a brother, who considered Jesus a member of their family and treated him like it. 
We were talking in worship meeting a couple of weeks ago about how chosen family has always been important for gay and lesbian people because so many of us have been rejected by our own families. But it's not just gay folks who need chosen family. We are separated from our parents and our children by geography. Grown children still need parental figures in their lives. And I, for one, need some grandchildren close by. Luckily, I've found some. I've been blessed to be a part of or know so many different kinds of families. Two moms, two dads, aunts as sisters, friends as fathers, adopted and biological siblings, multi-generational families. We have quite a rich diversity right here in our congregation. So the blind side, as we saw, is about Michael, a kid from the wrong side of the tracks, from the other side of town. He was taken away from his mother when he was just a little boy. He's been in and out of the foster system. And he's now secretly homeless and lonely and sad. It's obvious he wants to belong somewhere, but he just needs someone to help him get connected. And he finds that in Leanne, a very wealthy, very bossy woman who sees his predicament, brings him home, and immediately starts to mother him, just like she does her biological children. I love it that one of the first things she says is, don't you dare lie to me. <laughs> Probably heard that a lot growing up, huh? And the very first night, she pats him and says, sleep tight, honey. Mothering Michael is very natural for Leanne. The second night, she says, would you like to stay with us? He accepts, and she says, call me Leanne or Mama. Two days to become a family. And it wasn't just Mama Leanne who jumped right in. From the very beginning, SJ introduced Michael as his big brother. And when he was trying to get him to train harder in football, he goes, Michael, everybody in our family is an athlete. And Collins, his sister, when she was sitting with her snooty racist friends in the library and decided to move to study with Michael, he looked surprised and she said, why are you looking at me like that? We study together at home. They were very matter of fact, just like their mom. And it doesn't take long for Michael to begin to feel like family. Michael, we have something we'd like to ask you. What? Well, Leanne and I, we, well, we'd like to become your legal guardians. What's that mean? What it means is, is that we want to know if you would like to become part of this family. Kind of thought I already was. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. In the Bible, the mixing of biological and non-biological family goes way back. We all know the story of Moses, whose mother, to protect his life, put him in a basket, put him in the river, let him float down. He was rescued and adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter. And when she needed someone to nurse the baby, Moses' sister, who had crept along the riverbank, suggested her mother, also Moses' birth mother, to be his nurse. And can you imagine all the different families that were created in those 40 years that the Israelites spent in the desert? As older brothers died, younger brothers married their widows, took in their children. When they died, friends took in their children. 
The families became larger. Eventually, they joined together to become clans and then tribes. They were not all related by blood, but they were family. For Jesus, the disciples were his primary family, and he was both mother and father to them. And you know, they were more than just the 12 guys. We learn from the Gospel of Luke that the disciples included Mary Magdalene and many other women. That women were a part of Jesus' ministry and chosen family is remarkable for that time because the Palestinians did not like the social mixing of sexes and of course women were generally looked down on by men. But gender or profession or station in life didn't matter to Jesus. Those he chose were his. And he did what any parent would do. He taught them the important things they needed to know in life. He cautioned them about evil in the world. He gave them advice. He settled their squabbles. And when they were hungry, he picked grain for them, even on the Sabbath. Jesus shared with them thoughts and insights he didn't share with anyone else. He comforted them when they were afraid. He forgave them for everything they had done or ever would do. And he taught them to forgive as many times as it takes. He warned them not to be led astray or to fall for false prophets. He called them mothers and brothers and sisters. And he promised them that even though they might be physically separated, he would always be with them. Jesus did not have an easy life. But in his day-to-day -day living, he was surrounded by people who loved him and whom he loved. He drew comfort and strength from them and they from him. That is what families do for each other. They go through life together. They share one another's joys and sorrows. Connecting with others on that intimate level cures loneliness, improves self-esteem, and brightens our outlook on life. There are folks all around us who are like Michael in this movie. They just need for someone to see them, to see their value and choose to connect with them. And it is the sacred duty of the church as followers of Jesus to be family for every person who comes into this place. And we have ways to do that. Our small groups are a great way to connect. The people who were in my Advent small group are the people I am closest to today because we connected on that intimate level. We talked about things that were important to us. We laughed, we prayed, we drank lots of wine together. And now, we love each other. There are other ways to connect. Volunteering for outreach projects or congregational events. And it's up to those of us who promise to take off our bibs and put on our aprons to make sure that those who are new to this faith community find ways to connect. So will you? Can we? Can we be family for all who need one? And isn't that all of us? The gospel says, Jesus looked around at his disciples and said, here are my sisters and my brothers and my mother and my children. Here, here is my family.
Amen.